Hi there, and welcome back to the channel Machining with Joe, a channel where I share with you my journey as a beginner machinist. And today is a really exciting video because we're finally adding a power feed to the Walco WM180 mini lathe. So this is a project I've been meaning to do for a long time now, but it's just taken me a little bit of research to find out what hardware I need to actually run this power feed to the best of its ability. So the actual motor I've gone with is a stepper motor and because it's a stepper motor, it also needs a controller and a pulse generator to actually make this thing work. But that's what we're gonna be getting on with today is getting all the hardware finished off, the pulleys and the belts and seeing how this thing actually works. If you're thinking about doing this to your mini lathe, then stay tuned because this is definitely gonna help you out. But for now, Let's head over to the bench like we always do and check out what we're dealing with. Right then, this is all the components we need to get this stepper motor to work at a variable speed. I'm gonna quickly run through these components and then after that, we've got one more pulley to make which is over on the lathe and then we should be able to sort of rig this up and see if it's gonna work. So this big box over here is our power supply unit. So this takes 230 volts from normal household electricity and pumps out 24 volts DC. This is actually a 10 amp unit, so it's a lot bigger than what we need, but I thought I'll go bigger in case this motor's not gonna be powerful enough. So from there, that actually comes out one to the pulse width modulating control unit and another one to the stepper control unit. So how this works, is this bit here basically can, allows you to control the speed and this bit here takes all the input signals and then sends them out to the motor. So just to quickly show you how this is going to work, you basically turn the pulse width modulating module on, which automatically sends a signal to the control unit and then to the stepper motor. So this stepper motor, we can make it go up and down in speed all the way to a super slow speed or all the way to a fast speed. So I've already made a pulley up for the stepper motor itself and this is going to be connected using a small V-belt onto a pulley which is going to be on our lathe. So that's what we're going to be doing this morning is making up the other pulley and then after that rigging it all up, testing it out and seeing if it works. If you want any more information guys on this setup that I've got here, then drop a comment below and it might be a video that I'll do in the future. But for now, let's head over to the lathe and start making our pulley. So this piece of aluminium here is what we're gonna be making the pulley out of. And it's actually an old scrap bit of aluminium I had from previous videos. So there's a few dimensions here that we need to hit. First of all, the actual outer part of the pulley that the belt is gonna sit on, needs to be 48 millimeters and currently this is 51 millimeters of stock so we've not got too much to take off of there but this is where we're going to have to take off the majority of our material because we need this part here to be 20 millimeters to cover over the thrust washer on the end of the lead screw and currently this is it's about 37 mil so we've got a lot of material to take off of here so I'm going to start taking that material off now. Once I've got that down to final outer diameter, I'm going to add a few little curves in there using a new radius tool that I bought. And then we'll flip the part and turn down the pulley end and put the groove in it. So I'll come back in a bit when we're a little bit further along with this pulley because this is going to take quite a bit of turning down to get this to where we need it. So I'm bringing you back in now and we're currently at 23 millimeters here. And if you can see this here, I've left these sort of stepped sections. And this is so I can add a radius to here using a new radius tool that I've got. So we've got three more millimeters left to go and then we should be at final diameter. And I've got to admit, these new CCGT inserts that I bought have been a lifesaver for this project. So let's carry on now taking off one millimeter depth of cut. So I am doing quite a deep cut because I had so much material to remove. So one millimeter on my DRO is two millimeters overall. 
and it's not leaving the best of finish but on the final few passes I'm going to go back and make sure we've got a really good finish on here. Now we've reduced the depth of cut, that finish is coming in a lot better. Right, I'm going to measure that then now because I think that's close to what we need. That's 20.2, so that's going to be good enough for what we need. So I need to switch over now to the radius tool and try cutting a nice radius into the step section that we've left. So we've got our radius tool in there now and time to try freehanding this radius. So we've got a quite a nice radius starting to form there. So all I'm doing here is as I'm winding towards the chuck, I'm winding out with the cross slide. So now we've got the start of our shaft and radius, we now need to turn this larger part down to 48 millimetres. So luckily this is only 51 mil, so I only have to take down three millimetres, so that's not too bad. All right, let's give this a whirl. So I'm just gonna do 0.5 millimetre passes, which overall is one mil. So three of these and we should be at our final outer diameter. This part isn't super accurate either. I just want this pulley to be roughly double the size of our motor pulley. That way we should half the speed and double the torque. These CCGT inserts give a lovely finish aluminium. So this should be quite a quick process this one, shouldn't take too long. Right, as it stands this bit of material here is way too much for what we need. So I'm going to try quickly rigging something up in the bandsaw and just cutting this down and then we'll come back and face it off and centre drill it, ready for our M8 thread. So I managed to get rid of that excess material on the end by using my parting tool and part it as deep as I could go and then I just finished the last bit off with a hacksaw. So the next thing I need to do now on this pulley is put a V-groove dead centre in here and then once we've got a nice V-groove, I can then start to drill it out and tap that to an M8 thread to take the end of the lead screw. So I've already centred it up on the workpiece and locked my carriage. All I need to do now is start plunging into my work.
Right then, I've drilled and tapped this pulley now and wound it onto the lead screw. Sorry I missed out that bit of footage, I just didn't think you guys really wanted to see me drilling and tapping a hole. But that is fitted on there excellent. So my plan is to have this V-belt attached to the motor and have the motor sort of down here somewhere driving the lead screw. So I think I'm going to leave that to the next video now guys because there's been quite a bit of machining and explaining in this video and I think it needs a part two to this. So if you're super excited to see the finished product then please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and in the meantime go back and watch some of my previous videos in anticipation for when this is all done. Other than that guys, I'll see you in the next one.